This video provides a basic introduction to the RACH procedure in 5G for viewers with a background in wireless communication. RACH procedure is mainly used for a UE's initial connection establishment to a base station. Up until 3G, base station was omnidirectional, which means base station transmits signals with equal power in all azimuth directions. 4G introduced multiple beams in the transmission, and 5G narrowed down these beams. The UE wants to connect to the best beam of the base station. To this purpose, base station periodically transmits a special signal called SSB on all beams at different time instances, which is called an SSB burst. UE has to measure SBs on all beams and pick the one with the strongest signal power, in this case, the third beam. Another challenge is that a UE doesn't know the carrier frequency of SSB. Therefore, it has to be discovered using a brute force method. In 4G, base station sends SSB at the center frequency of the operating bandwidth. For example, if base station uses an operating bandwidth from 700 MHz to 750 MHz, then the SSB is transmitted at 725 MHz. However, in 5G, there is a predefined set of carrier frequencies for SSB, and base station selects the one that is within the operating bandwidth, in this case 740 MHz. The UE does a brute force search on all candidate SSB carrier frequencies to receive SSB signal. Additionally, the UE also doesn't know the timing of SSB reception. Hence, UE has to search for all possible timings for SSB reception. Note that SSB time duration and bandwidth are fixed and standardized, hence already known to UE. Once UE receives SSBs from all beams, UE picks the SSB with strongest signal power and decodes it. The SSB contains information about when the UE should transmit the RATCH signal. So UE transmits RATCH signal after the time offset specified within SSB. RATCH signal is basically a ZAD off Ju sequence. I will not cover more details on ZAD off Ju sequences in this lecture. But remember that there are 64 predefined ZAD off Ju sequences and the UE randomly selects one among them for the RATCH signal. The reason for having 64 ZAD off Ju sequences is that if another UE is also doing RATCH procedure at the same time, then that UE will most likely select a different ZAD off Ju sequence, thereby avoiding collision. Another challenge for base station is to know the timing of reception of the RATCH signal because the timing of the reception of RATCH by base station really depends upon the distance of the UE from the base station. If the UE is far away from base station, then base station receives the RATCH signal lately. However, base station knows the time window in which all RATCH receptions can occur based on the maximum cell range. Remember that, in our example, the UE has sent that off Ju sequence to as RATCH signal, and base station receives only noise when RATCH is not received. To detect the RATCH reception, base station correlates all 64 ZAD off Ju sequences with the received signal for all possible time shifts within this time window. To illustrate this point, base station first picks ZAD off Ju sequence 1, then correlates it with the received signal. The correlation output would be low for all time shifts because ZAD off Ju sequences have low cross correlation between any two sequences. Next, base station picks ZAD off Ju sequence 2 and correlates it with the received signal. In this case, the correlation output would be high when the sequences are time aligned. This is because ZAD off Ju sequences have high auto correlation only when the timings are exactly aligned and in all other time shifts, the autocorrelation value is ideally zero. Looking at the correlation output peak, base station knows that UE has sent ZAD off Ju sequence 2 and its time of reception. 
base station wants to receive all uplink signals from all UEs from the beginning of a time slot. Assume that this blue arrow is the slot boundary. Therefore, base station asks UE to prepone its transmission by sending the timing advance command. UE reads the timing advance command, adjusts the timing of all its future transmissions accordingly, and acknowledges it to base station by sending an RRC connection request. It can happen that another UE is also doing the same procedure at the same time. That is, UE2 could have sent Ratch with the same Z off Q sequence as UE1, and when UE2 gets the same timing advance command from base station, it believes that base station is addressing it. In such a scenario, UE2 would also send an RRC connection request along with UE1. But base station can complete the connection setup for only one UE. So, in order to help base station to distinguish between these two UEs, both the UEs arbitrarily choose a random number and send it as a parameter called TCRNTI inside the RRC connection request. UE2TCRNTI is different from UE1TCRNTI with a very high probability. Upon receiving RRC connection requests from both UEs, base station selects TCRNTI of one of these two UEs, usually the UE with the strongest signal power, and copies it to a new parameter called CRNTI inside the contention resolution message. Both the UEs receive the contention resolution message and compare CRNTI with TCRNTI. In this example, UE2 receives a different CRNTI from its TCRNTI. So, UE2 concludes that its RATCH attempt is a failure. Therefore, it has to re-attempt RATCH procedure at another time. In the meantime, UE1 is declared to be successfully connected to the base station. As a side note, these messages between UE and base station are generally called message 1, message 2, message 3, and message 4, respectively. I have explained the RATCH procedure used for initial connection establishment. But RATCH procedure can be used for other purposes as well, in which case the content of these messages may be different. For example, RATCH procedure can be used for handover when a UE transfers its connection to a neighboring base station while traveling. In that case, base station 1 can tell the UE where to look for SSBs from base station 2, so the UE only needs to look for SSBs in those frequencies and time slots only. This speeds up the connection procedure. After identifying the best beam and its SSB, UE sends RATCH to base station 2, and base station 2 replies to it with a timing advance command. UE adjusts its timing and declared to be successfully connected to base station 2. This method of fast connection establishment is called contention-free RATCH procedure. Note that the contention-free RATCH procedure has only two messages compared to the four messages involved in the previously explained contention-based RATCH procedure. I hope this video helps you get a basic understanding of the RATCH procedure in 5G. For the sake of simplicity, I have omitted many details here. For more details, please go through the references listed in the description below. Thank you for watching.